open your Bibles, please, to Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20, we're going to focus on verse 3. And for the sake of giving every message a title, I've entitled this Self as King. Self, me, as King. That's what it is. That's the heart that we have. (laughs) We've inherited it. That's our sin nature. That's why the Lord said you must be born again. I remember what the Jews told uh, Pilate. We have no king but Caesar. Yeah. Or we will not have this man to rule over us. Does he rule over you, brothers and sisters? Does he? I hope so. Are you fighting him? Let go. Let him have his way. Trust and obey. There's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Now, what does this verse say? Verse 3, thou shalt have no other gods before me. So here's the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20. And here's the big one. First, he, in verse 2, tells you who he is. I am the Lord thy God, thy God. I am the Lord thy God, not Pharaoh, not anybody else, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. In other words, remember where you came from. See, these people that become famous or rich, oh, I'll never forget my past. I remember where I came from, and I'll, uh, yeah, sure. In some cases they do, in other cases they don't. But this was critical as far as the Lord maintaining a right relationship with his people. They had to remember the bondage, the cruel bondage. It's God's way of saying, look, do you, don't look at the past and say the good old days. Don't, don't give me that baloney. They weren't good old days for you. It was hard bondage. You had to make bricks without straw. Things were horrible. And I rescued you. I am God. You know by the rescue I performed and then opening up the Red Sea. You know my power. I am the God that overrules nature and everything else. And I don't want any other gods in your life. Do you understand? I say, I understand. Well, then look at Paul writing Timothy in uh, in the New Testament. Flee idolatry. Flee idolatry is a problem. It's allowing other things or people to become God. Idolatry. Idol worship. Oh, it might not be statues. Might be your possessions. Look, the people that just suffered from the Hurricane Ian, they lost all their possessions. Many of them are not going to recover. The insurance is not going to cover it. And many of them, uh, for the most part, not that many people in Florida have flood insurance. And it's expensive. Okay, they've lost everything. And what do you have as far as the letter to the Laodicean church in Revelation 3? You have a church that's in love with its goods. We, we are increased of good with goods. We have need of nothing. We're rich. We're okay. Look at a couple of weeks ago. If you had taken a trip down to that part of Florida, I've been through it twice. It's beautiful. I have to tell you it's beautiful. All the way up from Sarasota, Na- uh, Venice, Naples, uh, Fort Myers, and, and that vacation spot that, boy, it. They're really crying over what happened to Sanibel Island. I'm sure you've heard it mentioned over in Sanibel Island. The causeway was destroyed, everything. Well, that was a garden spot. Sanibel Island uh, was quite a favorite spot for tourists and vacationers. It's a big spot. Well, the Lord destroyed it. Sanibel Island is to that part of Florida uh, what Destin is here on the panhandle. Destin is uh, quite a place for vacationers and even celebrities. Destin here in the Panhandle, not far from me, has become uh, almost like what the Hamptons are in Long Island. You know, the big celebrities, the big money makers in New York. In the summertime, they go out to the Hamptons on Long Island. I've been out there. The beaches is fine. They got Jones Beach. They have uh, Fire Island, and uh, the beaches are beautiful there. I've been out there. And the rich and the big, big shots go out there, just like Cape Cod and... Uh, Martha's Vineyard, (laughs) 
with Governor DeSantis of Florida sent some of the illegal aliens, <laughs> put them on a plane, sent them to Martha's Vineyard. Let the progressives there and the rich ones deal with it. Yeah, they keep telling you about how they, the poor, the poor, this remind me of the Pope. The poor, the poor, the poor. You're so concerned about the poor? Sell one of your Da Vinci uh, paintings or one of those sculptures for a couple of billion. Uh, open up a hospital in the poorest sections of Sicily. There's a lot of poverty there. Uh, show, show me how much you care for the poor. There's a guy who claims to be the vicar of Christ. He had no place to lay his head as poor as a church mouse. And here's a guy living in a 160-room palace with all of these Christ, <laughs> and he re represents the Lord. Are you kidding? Does any Catholic even think about this stuff? Does it even cross their mind? Didn't cross my mind for all the years I was Catholic. Why? The devil blinded me. He blinded me with God's permission. With God's permission, it wasn't my time. I wasn't ready. I wasn't, I don't know. I just wasn't time for the Lord to put his hand on me and say, okay, now pay attention to me. Forget this other stuff. Put away idolatry. And what does Paul writing Timothy tell us uh, the conditions in the last days, perilous times? For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Lovers of their own selves. Look at me, the selfie generation. It's all about me, me, me. That's it. And, and I, you know, I, I really, I don't like tattoos. I've said this before. I know a lot of Christians have it and everything. Yeah, I don't care if you get upset with Brother Militello or what. What are you doing? With it? You're putting marks on your body. First of all, if you're a Christian, it's not your body. It was bought with a price. You were bought with a price. Do you understand that if you're a Christian? It's not your own. Now, did you go to the owner? Did you tell him, I'm going to go to this shop and pay with your money, Lord? I'm going to use your money to scar me and put pictures on my body. How's that? Do I got your approval, Lord? Is that okay? Maybe I'll put a picture of my girlfriend there or some other thing that intrigues me. What is it with people? Notice me, me, me. My goodness. Oh, we're in for trouble. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Well, the Catholic Church is big on that. They've got Mary and the saints and whatever. I had a telecatholic the other day, not not uh, long ago. She says, you know, it's a wonderful thing what St. Jude's Hospital does for these children. I says, amen, thank God. I th it, it, they do do a one, they do great work for children with cancer. But don't give the glory to St. Jude. It belongs to Jesus Christ. Why do you steal in the, well, Danny Thomas, you know, he started that hospital and he had said that St. Jude answered a prayer that he was down and out in Hollywood and couldn't have enough to get a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. He kept praying to St. Jude, who, by the way, is the patron of hopeless cases. And uh, St. Jude answered his prayer and he got this television show and all of that. And he got back in the chips and he, uh, he, he made a vow to St. Jude that if things turned around, he would build a hospital in his honor. And he did. He followed through. Well, that's good. You make a vow, follow through on it. Unless the Lord tells you don't. So obviously he didn't know the Lord. But that glory now is given to St. Jude. Every time they run a commercial, St. Jude, St. Jude, St. Jude. I have people tell me, who's St. Jude? Well, the Catholic Church set him up years ago as the patron of hopeless cases. He's the one you go to when, uh, when you make phone calls to heaven and you don't get a return call. Or even when you call up Mary, for some reason she doesn't pick up the line. <laughs> That's bad news. Catholics were always told Mary's heart is always open. And I guess, I don't know if he prayed to uh, Mary or what. I know he's Lebanese. He's a, he was a Maronite Christian. That's a branch of uh, Catholicism, although not Roman Catholicism. And I remember in Brooklyn, not far from where I worked once, was the Church of Our Lady of Lebanon. Our Lady of Lebanon. So Lebanon has the... Uh, the idolatry of worshiping the lady. The, who's that? Well, the so-called virgin, the, the perpetual virgin, the lady of Lebanon. And by the way, that's where the CIA director under President Ronald Reagan, I think it was 1984, I got to look that up. He's a member of the Knights of Malta, a super rich Catholic organization, very loyal to the Pope. Well, he uh, persuaded President Ronald Reagan, his close friend of Ronald Reagan, that the Lebanese government, which at the time was being run by Maronite Christians, but they were having trouble with the Muslims, Hezbollah, 
that in order to prop up that Lebanese government, uh, United States Marines ought to be dispatched to Lebanon to prop up the government. And do you know history? you know what happened with that, with President Reagan and the CIA and all of that? Well, the Iranians got in there with bombs and killed, what was it, 284 Marines who lost their lives because some wacko Catholic wanted to hold up a government that was that was being run by corrupt Catholics, Maronite Catholics, who were having problems with the Muslims and didn't want to give in and share power. Does anybody read this? As, I, I know this. I read it. I know better than most people that devil that lives in Rome, that devil that lives in Rome and dresses up in a Halloween outfit and supposedly blesses people. Thou shalt have no other gods but me. People make him a god. People make him a god. They kiss his ring. What is he? He's a devil. He's a devil. He's the vicar of Christ. My foot calls himself Holy Father. Listen on television. You'll hear that all the time. Holy Father. Really? Bible says, call no man holy, for only God is holy. What are you calling him Holy Father for? Take away that Halloween outfit, and he's a man just like me. Holy Father. That's Rome. That's the Holy Father. My goodness, if people would just read history. Nobody reads history anymore, so nobody knows. And don't expect any of these television stations to give you the truth on <laughs> what the Roman Church does and how they promote worship for everybody and anything else other than the Lord Jesus Christ. They give them lip service. Oh, yeah, in the name of Jesus. They'll give them lip service, but they're not promoting him. They're not giving glory to the Lord Jesus Christ, and they're not pointing anyone to Calvary to get to put faith in Jesus Christ's blood atonement. No, you're being told to put faith in their church and in their sacraments. And don't expect to get this kind of stuff from Fox TV that's Catholic from top to bottom, okay? The the MAGA station. Yeah, I know they got a lot of good stuff on there and it's better than listening to some of these other uh, channels which are full of the devil and maybe Fox less so. But remember the word Fox. Remember what Jesus said about Herod. Go tell that Fox. You got it? Fox. Fox TV. Are they going to give you a, a... Is anyone there going to produce a documentary on the role of the Catholic Church in promoting illegal uh, migration to the United States, in setting up these centers in Central America and Venezuela and everywhere else they can get away with it and push people up to the United States, give them food and support. Has anybody read the bishop statement, the Catholic bishops of the United States Conference for Catholic Bishops, their statement on these illegals coming in? You think Fox is going to do an expose on that? Don't hold your breath. It's Catholic from top to bottom, and they're going to protect the integrity of the Catholic Church. And the same thing with that new channel that opened up some months ago. It's already getting a following. It's called Newsmax. Newsmax, and that's, I believe, Mark Ruddy, Ruddy, or Cl- I, I, forget, I think the last name is Ruddy, Arch-Catholic. I think he's also Knights of Malta. So you're going to get the same Catholic viewpoint there. Brothers and sisters, we, we, we're in a septic tank of lying, corruption, filth, and whatever else you can imagine. I, I mean, God allows us to stay here, so what? We could sow the seed and get his work done. Other than that, we'd be happy to just get away from this place and turn it over to these crazies that are in love with each other and promote each other. Hopefully he'll come soon and, and uh, say, that's enough. But in the meantime, we labor. We labor, like Paul said, we labor. We have the ministry of reconciliation. We try and convince people that the only good thing to give glory to is the Lord Jesus Christ and his church. God bless the saints that are out there working for him. And I'm, I'm glad he put me in that service years ago. Just go out there and tell people about me and expose, hate everything that's not of God. Hate the things God hates. Romanism, yes. Catholics, I love them. And, I, and I've led quite a few to Jesus Christ. Okay? But Catholicism, let it go to the devil and all these other good works uh, uh, religions. They're all the same. They all tell you the same thing. Do this, that, do this, that, and hope you make it. What kind of good news is that? Is that, is that a gospel? What kind of gospel is that? What, why, why come down from heaven and die for sinners if your religion can save you? Just announce to people, look, I'm staying in heaven because if you do good and you follow me with all your heart and everything, and after all, the Pope just acknowledged it not long ago, uh, you can find me. See, there are other ways to heaven. 
if you're just a good person. So why even preach the gospel? Why even say Jesus is the only way? There's no other way to God but through Jesus Christ. That divides people, doesn't it? That's not inclusive. Oh, and the big word today in our society is, are you inclusive? What does that mean? Well, do you have men that uh, call themselves women now? <laughs> I should include them in what? Sports? The locker room? Inclusive? Go to the devil with that stuff, inclusive. What are you talking about? What is everybody going nuts? And that's what's happening. Dr. Ruckman said light rejected becomes lightning. This country has more truth poured out on it. I'll tell you, for years, truth, 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 even though a lot of it is distorted or not clear enough, comes over Christian radio or television, but the gospel is preached everywhere. The gospel you can't miss. Everywhere in America, you're going to hear something about the gospel. Now, the Lord keeps pouring this light out on America, and America keeps turning its back. What's the result going to be? Another Hurricane Ian coming? And where's it going to hit? Where's it going to hit? God forbid. Thank God my, uh, my loved ones escaped that. And I remember what Hurricane Ivan, remember that, Tyler? 2004 it was. Boy, it devastated this area of Pensacola. We had the National Guard out here. The, no gasoline and the pumps weren't working. The power was out. It was hot and humid. There was no air conditioning. Oh, it was horrible. I remember sleeping, trying to sleep at night in a house with no power. And the sheets were like band-aids. They stuck to you from the heat and the humidity. And was, <laughs> we get so used to our conveniences, brother and sister. It's when they're taken away from us. Watch out. <laughs> it's just a horrible way to live. And I thank God for the blessings God has given us. He's good. He's good. So fear him. And, and remember this, thou shalt have no other gods, whether it's your wallet, your wife, your husband, your boyfriend, your, whoever, whoever you look up to. Remember, the media creates gods and it creates devils. If you go against the Bible and you attack the Bible, you, you become a god in the media. They love you. If you stand up for the truth and stand up for what God says, then you're a devil. You're, you're no good. And that's, you're going to hear more and more of that. And... Uh, the only way to stay away from this stuff and be polluted by your mind is to keep your nose in the book. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your truth. What would I do without it? Amen. Amen.